Hi and welcome to PM Coding. My name is Patricia and today I will show you how to create this interactive animation using CSS. Whenever you hover over one of the dots, they start growing and changing their color. When you leave them, they stop. Different dots have different colors and they grow at a different speed and to a different size. If you are interested in learning front-end web development and doing such projects, feel free to subscribe. So, let's get started. I am starting with an empty project folder, which I have opened in my code editor, VS Code. I am going to need three files for this project. These are index.html, style.css, and script.js, which I am adding here. First, I am going to do the markup. In the index.html file, I am adding the head section, where I am changing the site title to PM Coding Tutorials, and I'm also linking the style sheet and the JavaScript files. To the body tag, I do not need to add much. I am only adding a div with the ID canvas and an h1 with the site title, which is PM coding in my case. This is the markup done, so let's add some CSS. The first thing I will do in the CSS file is to import a custom font. I am going to use Righteous for this tutorial, which is available on Google Fonts. If you visit fonts.google.com and search for Righteous, you can select it and copy the import statement from there. Next, I will define some CSS variables in the root, one for the font and the other ones for the colors that I'm going to use for this project. To save time, I am going to copy paste the code in. You can now see that I have various variables, most holding a color. Now that we have this basic setup, I am going to apply a margin and a padding of zero to every element by using the universal selector so that the browser-specific settings do not interfere with my design. Next, I am going to give the div with the ID of canvas some styling. I want it to be as wide as the page, so I am giving it a width of 100%. I also want it to be as high as the page, so I am setting the height to 100VH. The content, including the dots, should be aligned to the middle, so I am also adding the property of text align, which I set to center. When you look at the final project, you can see that there are small dots stacked next and below each other. Each of these dots will be inside a div. These container divs will have the class box applied to it, so I want to give this class some styling too. I am selecting the box class by using dot box, and I am defining following properties width 20 pixels and height 20 pixels as I want them to be square. They should be placed next to each other so I will set the display to inline block. For now I will also give it a border of 1 pixel solid blue so that we can see the dots once we have added them to the page. If I open the page now and we have a look at it, there is not much to see. So let's add the dots with JavaScript. I only want the JavaScript code to execute when the page has fully loaded. To achieve this, I am adding an event listener to the window by stating window.addEventListener. The event we will be listening for is called DOM content loaded, so I am passing this as the first argument. The second argument will be a callback function that should be called when the page has loaded. I will call this setup. Now let's define the setup function. Within this function, I will add another function with the name create dots. This will, as you can guess, create the dots on the screen. The first thing I want this function to do is to get the div with the ID of canvas and save it to a variable. I will define the variable as const canvas. To get the div, I can use document get element by id and then just pass the id of the element in. Next I want to save the height and the width of the canvas. 
The width I will save in a const called width by using canvas.offsetWidth. Offset width will get the width of the element, including padding and the border. I will do nearly the same for the height. I will save it in a const called height and then set this equal to canvas.offsetHeight. Now I want to fill the screen with the 20 pixel wide and 20 pixel high divs. To achieve this, I am going to use a for loop, which is another for loop nested inside it. In the outer for loop, which represents the columns, I am setting let i equal to zero. I want this loop to run as long as i is smaller than the width of the canvas. Each time the loop executes, I want i to increment by 20, which is the width of the div box we are creating. This way, they will get placed next to each other. The inner loop, which represents the row, starts with let j being 0. The loop should execute as long as j is smaller than the height. Each time the loop runs, j should increment with 20. Within the loop, I want to create the divs. I will create the div with the class box by defining the variable outer div and setting it equal to document create element div. This inbuilt JavaScript function will create the element for us. Then I want to add the class of box to this element. I can achieve this with outer div dot class list dot add box. Finally, I just want to append it to the div with the ID of canvas. I can do this with canvas dot append child outer div. With this, I have created the basic create dots function. Let's call it and see what the result is. As you can see, the page is filled with 20 pixel wide and high divs. If I scroll down, you can see that there is an overflow of boxes which extends over the visible screen. There is a simple and perhaps lazy solution to this. Go back to your style sheet and add overflow hidden to the canvas ID selector. And voila, there is no more overflow. We can still scroll though, but this is only because the H1 is not positioned in the center of the screen. Next, I want to add the dots inside these squares. To add the dots, I need to modify our create dots function a little bit. I will begin by defining an array, which will hold five different class names. I will name the array const classes and add five strings for the class names inside it. Then, inside the for loops, I will create additional divs for the dots. I will specify const inner div and use document.createElement and pass div as an argument. Then I want to add the dot class name to each of them using document.classList.add. Apart from the dot class, I also want to add one of the five classes we have saved in the array above. These classes should be randomly assigned. This will result in the dots having different colors and growing to different sizes. To do this, I will create a variable called letRandom. I will then use the math.random function to generate a random number between 0 and 1. As there are five classes and the indexes of the array range from 0 to 4, I will multiply math.random with 5. Then I will use math.floor to round the random numbers downward to the closest integer. This way the variable random will always hold a number between 0 to 4, which I can use as an index to access the values of the classes array. So now that we have this set up, I can add random classes to the inner div using inner div.classlist.add and then pass classes random inside it. Finally, I want to append the inner div element to the outer div element. For this, I will use outer div.append child and pass inner div into the function. Let's go back to the CSS file and add the dot class. I will give it a width 
and a height of 10 pixels so it is smaller than the parent div. I will additionally give it a background color of red and a border radius of 50% so it becomes round. If I save this and reload the page, you can now see the dots inside the circle. It is not well positioned yet, but we will do that next. I want to position the dots in the center of the container box divs. I will select the dots based on the classes we randomly assigned with JavaScript. So I will select them by using the class name .color .color and so on. To center them horizontally and vertically, I will use transform. I will apply position relative, top 50%, left 50%, and then I will use transform, translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. Now if we reload the page, you can see the dots are centered. Let's continue by defining the animation. I will define add keyframes and name the animation grow1. I want to animate the size, the background color and the z-index. At the beginning, so at 0%, the background color should be cream, the z-index should be 0, and the size should be 10 pixels. At 20%, I want to increase the z-index to 1. The reason for this is that I want the dot to cover the background and all the other dots and not disappear behind other elements. Also, I want the z-index to change closer to the beginning of the animation so it does not look weird at the end when the z-index suddenly changes. Then at 100% I want the color to completely change to dark green. The width and the height should be 50 pixels and the z-index can remain 1. Now that we have the animation defined, let's assign it to the color-number classes. I will give them an animation name of grow1, animation duration of 2 seconds, animation timing function is out, and animation fill mode forwards. If I save this and reload, you can see that they all start animating and you are left with a dark green screen. This is of course not what we want. So in order to rectify this, I will add animation play state paused to the color classes. I only want the dots to grow when I hover over the container divs. So I am defining dot box colon hover and then dot color dash one and so on and give it a value of animation play state running. This will not only ensure that the dots only grow when you hover over their container, but also that they remain in their altered state when the mouse leaves the container and no longer hovers over it. Let's have a look. As you can see, the dots now only grow when you hover over them. The next thing I will do is define four more animations so that the dots can grow to different sizes and change to different colors. I will copy paste the code in so you don't have to watch me type it in. To give you an overview, the animations are pretty much the same apart from their name and the size and the background color I have defined at 100%. Let's assign these animations to the color-number classes. First, I will remove the animation name from where we selected all five classes together and instead I will select the class color-1 separately. I will give it the animation name grow1. I will then select the color-2 class and give it the animation name grow2. Quickly, I will do the rest of the three classes and give each their own animation name. Finally, I will remove the border from the container divs and also the background color red from the dots as we do not need these anymore. If we reload the page, you can now see that the dots change to different colors and sizes. 
let's position the h1 on top of the dots. I will paste some code in for the title and explain what I have done. I have given it the position absolute as I want to remove the title from the document flow. To center it vertically and horizontally, I again use the top, left and transform properties we use to center the dot. I also aligned the text center. Then I specified it should use the righteous font and gave it some styling. To make the text responsive, I used the calc function in conjunction with the viewport width. This way, if we resize the window, the text shrinks and grows. Alpha, the text is responsive, the rest of the page is not. If we make the window narrow and refresh, it all looks good. The screen is filled with dots from the bottom to the top. But when I make it wider, you can see that there are not enough dots present to cover the whole page. To sort this, we need to add one line of code to the JavaScript file. What I want to happen is that any time the resize event on the window is triggered, the dots should be redrawn instead of rearranged. To achieve this, I can say window.addEventListener and pass in resize as the event and then the function create dots. Let's see if it works. Looks all good and our project is now finished. The complete code is available to you through my GitHub, which I linked below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe. I put out coding videos every week. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.